Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to keep going with the LTX2, explore more features of this AI model. This time, we're taking a look at using IC LoRa ControlNet with our own audio input for character. In the previous video, we talked about using image to video setups like this, and you can also bring in your own image and audio. By using the LTX base model itself, the one that goes into the sampler and can actually generate voice natively. But image to video do not provide you something you really want how a character move. As always, the best method video to video for motion capture. So, after trying image to video, moving forward to video to video, and we're taking our own audio file and converting it into an audio latent. That's done using the LTX audio VAE encode node. It works kind of like how we encode images. When we run an image through an image encoder to get its latent representation, well, this is the same idea, but for audio. And just like with images, we also apply a mask here. Why? Because this mask helps define which parts of the audio latent space will blend with the video latent later on. It's the same core concept you'd use for image to video or video to video workflows when you want to include your own audio. I've found that image to video doesn't always work super well for this kind of thing. Like, say you start with a single image, maybe something like this, as your first frame. You feed in your audio. And sure, the model can do lip syncing, so your character speaks whatever's in the audio. But here's the problem. You don't really have control over the motion. If you're trying to make something that feels like a music video, where movement, timing, and expression all matter, you're kind of stuck. Yeah, you can try guiding it with text prompts, but sometimes the results just don't look that great. So here's what I prefer to do instead. I skip image to video altogether and go straight to video to video. Why? Because with video to video, you already have motion baked into your source footage. Pair that with your custom audio input, and now you've got way more control over how the final output looks, especially when it comes to expressions, gestures, and overall vibe. For example, in this clip, I'm using my own Laura to generate this character, and I've styled the whole thing to feel like a music video. The source footage? It's just a simple clip of someone walking, exactly the motion I wanted for this 10 to 20 second speech or vocal segment. And since it's video to video, the character's movements stay consistent with that original motion. Oh, and about lip syncing? Well, technically, LTX2 doesn't do lip syncing in the traditional sense. Instead, it natively generates video that matches your audio, including facial expressions and mouth movements. So everything, the talking, the emotion, the timing, comes out looking way more natural than if I'd started from a static image. Now, here's how I set up the audio side of things. Instead of just dropping in an audio file and hoping for the best, I actually extract the transcript first. I use the Vox CPM text-to-speech model I mentioned in a previous video. It's the same one we tested last year. One cool feature, it can auto-generate a transcript from any audio you give it. In this case, I took a music track and isolated the vocal part. That vocal becomes my reference audio, but I'm not actually using the audio itself in the final render. What I am using is the text transcript pulled from it, so I extract the lyrics directly from the audio, and once I have that, I can automate the whole thing using a string replace node. Here's how it works. I've got a template for my text prompts, and inside that template, there's a special tag, like a placeholder. When I run the workflow, that tag gets automatically swapped out with the actual transcript from my reference audio. For instance, if the character is supposed to be singing, the prompt might say, the character is singing, Transcript 1. And whatever lyrics come out of the audio processing, they slot right into those quotes. That way, LTX2 knows exactly what the character should be saying or singing at any given moment. Once all that's processed, I can use the audio frame count to determine the video length. Why? Because the sampler group actually generates empty latents based on that duration. But you've also got another option. Video frame count. I've included both in this setup so you can pick whichever works better for you. Most of the time though, I lean toward using video frame count, especially since I'm usually working with reference footage that already has the motion I want. If the audio is longer than the video, I just trim it down to match. By default, I've set this to 20 seconds, but you can adjust it based on your audio or video length. Now about the image input, I can either load a low res version from an input folder or pull it directly from a file path on my system. Personally, 
I almost always load from my folder path, that's just my way. Some folks prefer the load image node because it feels more user-friendly, that's totally fine, either way works. Just pick what feels smoother for you. Alright, let's jump into the sampler group. Yeah, it looks like a total spaghetti mess in here, I know. I've already set this up as a default template that'll work for most upcoming LTX2 video workflows. Plus, I've added a toggle so you can switch between high VRAM and low VRAM modes depending on your setup. So even if you're running on limited memory, you should be good. You probably won't need to touch most of this. It's all wired up to handle the frame count logic I mentioned earlier, whether you're using audio or video frames. Here's the key part. When you pass in a frame count, the system creates an empty latent space of that exact length. Now, if your control net video is shorter than your audio, what happens? Well, once the control net runs out of frames, the model just falls back to an image to video mode for the remaining duration, so it'll still finish the full length. You just lose some motion control at the tail end. That's why I usually stick with video frame count. Since the whole point of using control net here is to lock in those motions, it makes sense to let the video dictate the timeline. Moving on, we're using stage one and stage two sampling, just like usual. Why do I keep doing it this way? Because stage two gives us a chance to refine details without slowing things down too much. In fact, I've added an IC LoRa detailer in stage two. And thanks to the distilled LoRa version, it doesn't add much overhead. And just a reminder, if you're running a distilled model, like a GGUF version, you'll need to bypass this LoRa node. But if you're using the FP8 version of the LTX model, like I am right now, then you can safely use the distilled LoRa. I've covered how that works in a few past videos, so feel free to check those out if you're curious. Anyway, that's pretty much it. This workflow is basically the same as the video to video one we've used before. The only real difference is, I've added the audio input pipeline and plugged in that detailer for extra polish. Oh, and I've got some AI-generated songs ready here just for testing, so I can try out different vocals and see how they sync up. One last reminder, pay attention to your text prompt format. I'm using Transcript 1 as my placeholder tag, but you can name yours whatever you want. Just make sure your final prompt wraps the spoken content in double quotes, like this. The character is singing. LTX2 expects that format to properly trigger the audio-aware generation. I've even left a note in the workflow explaining why the quotes matter, so keep an eye out for that. All right, let's check out a quick comparison. Say I want to test a different starting image. This time, I'll use an image generated with Quen Image Edit 2511. I grabbed the first frame from my reference video, converted it to a DW pose, and then used one of my character Laura's to generate a new face. I also prompted it to remove the glasses, so now the character looks cleaner and more polished. To speed things up, I'll just load the image directly using the load image node and make sure it's connected to the resize node. That way, everything stays aligned resolution-wise. Before I hit run, I double-check the prompt strength settings, gotta make sure they're dialed in for LTX2, and yep, this prompt looks solid. Perfect. And here's the result. No glasses, clearer facial features, and you can really see the expressions coming through especially during the speaking parts. Compared to older methods, this feels way more alive and intentional. So yeah, that's a quick update on how you can use LTX video with your own custom audio. Super flexible, super expressive, and way more controllable than starting from a static image. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya. Near, low, wherever.